What up team? My name is Paul Lewis. It is lovely to have you aboard today and especially so if you're brand new to the channel. Welcome. I've noticed from the comments in the other videos that you definitely want to see a more advanced build tutorial and also something on service workers. So I'm going to try and get to those at some point. I would also like to do a Q&A. So if you've got questions and you think I can answer them, then do feel free to comment below and I will try and get there. But today I want to talk about CSS or in fact how you can make something like this Ooh, that's fun. Without any JavaScript whatsoever, it is time for the intro. Okay, this is very exciting to be able to do this. I've been looking forward to doing this one for a few weeks, but I'm not going to be able to cover every little detail of it. I'm going to try and cover it as I build things and as I type up the code, uh, just so that you can follow along and, and see whatever. But if you really want to get into the deep guts of it, uh, the source code will be on erotwist.com slash tutorials, which has been the historical place for putting all my tutorial stuff, which I haven't done for a good long time. Return to the tutorial vibes, Paul. Well done. Good for you. Okay. On screen then, we have a little bit of HTML just set up pretty much nothing in there, just, you know, a link to the style sheet, a viewport meta tag and the title and so on. So not a lot going on in there. Uh, and uh, in the CSS, I have something that will essentially reset the margins and padding of HTML and body and their width and height to 100%. So they just take up full viewport and the body I've set to display flex straight in with a pro tip here. Um, I've set the body to display flex. So it's a flex box. Uh, and the align items and justify content both to center. This is the quickest and easiest way to vertically and horizontally align content. Since we've had Flexbox, it's been a lot more straightforward to do vertical alignment in CSS. And this will mean that whatever we put in the page will be in the middle, just as you saw before. So what are we going to do? We're going to drop in a div. You could do this with custom elements. I'm not doing that today. I just want to keep things nice and simple. Uh, I'm going to call this reveal. I'm going to drop that in there and inside what I want to do. Oh, in fact, let me just style that up to begin with. Let's do that reveal. Okay. So I reveal because we had a bit of revealing text. That's why I'm calling it. That it doesn't really matter what we want to call it, to be honest. Uh, I'm going to say width 320 pixels, whoop, height 180 pixels. So this is 16 by nine ratio. Again, you could uh, not hard code it. You could hard code it to other values, whatever works really. I'm going to do background. I'm going to do deep pink just so that we can see something on screen. Border radius. Whoa, border radius, three pixels. Let's see how that looks. Now I, my screen is zoomed in. That's why this looks so big. Uh, and that's because this is quite a, a big screen and so on. So it wouldn't look that big on your screen, I'm sure, but hopefully you get the idea. So we've got a pink box in the middle. Marvelous. Next, we want to probably get rid of that. Um, let's actually add in an image. So I actually have some images uh, that I can use. I get them from Unsplash. If you've never seen unsplash.com, have a look at that. I'll link it in the description below. Very, very cool. Uh, amazing photography that you can just use in your project. Um, it's great. So got a picture of a person overlooking a, a lake, maybe? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that in the alt tag. Alt equals person sitting on a wall overlooking a lake. Hmm. As we hover over this, we want it to kind of scale up and get bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a transform. Now I always animate with transforms and opacity wherever possible. It's amazing how far you can get just doing that. There's a very good performance reason for doing it. I'm not going to talk about that particularly other than to say it's faster. Um, and where you can, you want to think in transforms and opacity. Uh, if you, in fact, I'll link some stuff in the description below where I go into a lot of detail about why that matters. But for now, we're just going to scale this down to 0.9 and we're going to do a transition on transform 0.4 seconds. And then I'm just going to do a nice ease out, which is in my head is 0, 0, 0 0.3 and one. That should do that. And then what we do is we do a reveal hover and we're going to say transform scale one. You could say scale none. That would also do this. So now as I hover over it, get a nice little scale up effect there. It feels like it should have a cursor of pointer on it as well so that you get that nice little hand cursor when you're 
hovering over it. That implies a button, so maybe this could be an anchor or a button element. But if it is, then use that in the in the markup. I'm just I'm not doing that right now, just to demonstrate the point. But do the right thing semantically. Make sure you go for the correct tag, correct element. Right, let's have a look. Uh, da, da, da. Let's add the shadow. That's a good thing to add. So I use, for things like shadows, I typically use pseudo elements. So I'm going to do content empty there. And I'm going to say display block. Sure. Position it absolute so that it um, can sit behind the image. And in order to make that work, I'm going to have to make this position relative. Okay, so with that in mind, we're going to say width 100%, height 100%, background. I'm going to say, oh, let's do that as a solid black. And let's have a look at that. Yep, that's overriding sitting on top of the image. And the reason it's sitting on top of the image is because it's position absolute and the image is position static. So what we'll do is we'll put reveal image position relative. And that is actually going to fix it because what's happening is it's saying the first child, which is the before the pseudo element is position absolute. The image is position relative. So it will stack them in source order, which is good. That's exactly what we want. And what I'll do is let's add a bit of a blurry shadow to it so we can start to see it again. Uh, so in order to do that, we do a box shadow. And we'll do naught, which is the X, naught, which is the Y. Let's do 12 pixels for the blur and six pixels for the spread. And then we'll make that a solid black as well. Now you can see we've actually got the shadow and it obviously it's not looking very nice yet but it will do it'll look, look, look a lot nicer in a moment so i'm going to do uh i'm going to bring it in width and height wise and i'm going to do that with an absolute pixel measure rather than say a percentage measure as because otherwise it would be it would be twice the width though that would be 16 ninths worth of uh change because of the percentages it's not a square. If it was a square, then you could just say like 90% and it would be like, but if I do that here, it's not going to work out well. So I'm just going to make it an absolute value of 20 pixels. And that will do that. And then we need to move left. Uh, we've taken 20 pixels, so we say 10 pixels there. And then the top, something like 15 pixels see if that works okay so now the shadow appears underneath the image which is is kind of nice it's probably a little bit too far yeah that's about right that'll do that'll do it now the reveal before also needs to respond to the hover so we can do reveal uh hover hover yeah hover there we are before and i'm going to say transform Translate Y, eight pixels. I'm just gonna guess that to begin with. Okay, so that slides it out the bottom. I think we could go further, 12. Yeah, let's do that. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the transition on transform also to apply to the before. Like that, look at that. There you go, it's now sliding out. It is a very dark, Black color, that's not what we want. So let's change its opacity. So we'll give it a default opacity of say 0.4. Let's try that. Yeah, that's probably fine. And then when it's slid out, slide it out, slid out. When, when it's there, it can be 0.2. You see it's, it's obviously not animating the opacity, but the, the values themselves look fine. So we can update this transition by putting a comma on the end and then adding in opacity there. So now we ease opacity at the same time as we ease. There we are, look at that, as we ease the transform. So it feels like it's getting bigger. It feels like it's coming out of the screen because the eye seeing the shadow come down below and it's getting lighter. The reason we're doing the two element thing uh, rather than say animating box shadow is because we, when we do it this way, um, it's better for performance reasons because we're taking an existing element that's already been painted once and we just change its opacity, it's changed its transform, the browser can do that in an accelerated way. 
Whereas if we animate box shadow, we have to paint the box shadow on every frame and it's a blur effectively to do a box shadow and that makes it very expensive. So you may remember from the start of this, we had some text that slid over the top when we did the reveal. Let's get into some of that then. Now this is a little bit messier than that first bit, but hopefully not too messy and maybe shows a, a couple of interesting things about working uh, with the web and transforms and all that kind of good stuff. So let's get into it a little bit. On the HTML side, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a div. I'm gonna call it uh, reveal title. I'm using BEM here. If you've not come across BEM, you should have a check of that. If it was doing Shadow DOM, I wouldn't be using BEM, but I'm not, so I am, and eh, it's all good. So let me just put in the hello, something like, I'm gonna do like hello world. It doesn't really matter what that title is. So with the reveal title on the styling side, what we're gonna do is we're going to say position absolute, absolute. Let's say top zero, left zero, so on and so forth width 100%, height 100%, uh, font size, call it 36 pixels, color white, there we are. Now on the screen we're not actually going to see anything because similar to before, the reveal title is position static whereas, sorry it's position absolute in fact, as, as well as the image. So uh, we're not gonna see this appear on top of that because they're still in source order. So I'm going to go and add a Z index or a Z index on top of this. And by just giving it a Z index or Z index value, it's going to appear on top of the image, which is good. So it's a similar kind of thing with the, the stacking context, the ordering um, that I briefly alluded to before. Now we want it to appear in the middle, that text. So let's say display flex again and align content center. Uh, oh, it's no, it's align. I get so easily confused on this one. Align items and then justify content center. That should do it. There we are, that's in the middle. Now we need to do the one which says world and it kind of slides in from the side. So let's do that. So we'll do the title and we'll call it title overlay for now. And I know I'm going to need an inner child element for this. So I'm gonna call this overlay value. What could I call it overlay text? I'll call it overlay text, sure. Hello yeah. world. There we are. The reveal title overlay is going to be like this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say it is say a hundred pixels tall. And we are going to say it is uh, also position absolute. So we need left zero. Top, we're gonna to do top, we're gonna to do calculations again. We're gonna say 50% minus 50 pixels. Again, I'm hard coding a lot of these values just to make things uh, easier here, but in reality, you'd want to do something a little bit more uh, flexible, I would expect in production. Okay, so the reveal overlay is, no, 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 no. That will also need a Z index on it, two. Okay, it says world and it's obviously not in the right place yet, but we're getting somewhere. Let's do background. And we're going to do that as a dark gray. And then what we're gonna do is similar to this one, we're gonna take that, pop that there and change the color to white and also change the font size. So they're very, they're fairly similar. I think we could possibly get away with doing something similar and then just overriding the values. In fact, let's do that. Let's just collapse that in. So let's see which ones are different. So both position absolute, that can go. Top is different, so that needs to stay. Left is the same, so that can go. Width and height, uh, width is the same. Height is not, so that stays. Z index is different. Uh, they're both doing the display that and the color is the same here. So that seems good. So we can do that for now. Although we possibly want to change the color of the, the other text on the other side, the, the hello before the world. So that's looking okay. I think we could actually make this font size maybe a touch bigger as well, just to a um, bit of variation, I suppose. 42 pixels. Yeah, we'll go for that with that for now. What I'm gonna do in the reveal overlay itself, so this is the gray box in the background. I'm actually gonna skew that. So I'm gonna do a transform. I'm gonna skew it 
minus 30 degrees. Okay, now that seems like an odd decision, but bear with me. What I can then do with the child element, the overlay text, is I can do a transform of 30 degrees. And because it's a linear transformation of skew, it resets the text, the inner part, while leaving the skew on the outer part. And that's kind of neat. So one of the things we need to do is we need to now make this gray block a little bit wider on screen, because as you see, it's sort of slightly inside this, uh, the element here. So let's do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make that a touch wider here by saying, I'm just gonna hard code the value. I'm gonna say something like 405 pixels. That seems a little bit odd um, that it's not working. But again, what we can do is we can apply a transform. And there is a reason I'm doing it all like this um, with transforms. It's largely because of the fact that if we don't use transforms here, it will start to get a little bit messier. And I know it doesn't look that clean already, but trust me, it does get even messier if you don't do it like this. So with it being a bit wider, what we actually want to do is we want to do something a little bit different here. We want to position it by default in the middle and then account for it with the transform. So what we're going to do is we're going to move it into the middle with left 50%, okay? And then we're gonna do minus 150%. And the reason we do this is so that when it comes back in, the middle part, where I'm just gonna put my cursor here, this is smack in the middle. And then if we, instead of translating to zero now, we're going to translate to my X to minus 50%. And that says, whatever happens, just go to the middle. Okay, so now the, the gray block is certainly going into the middle and you can see the world is sliding to the side there and the reason for that is because it isn't going to be doing the right thing. It needs to go from, let's see, 150% maybe. Ooh, I like how that comes in from the other side but that isn't the effect that we want. Maybe we just want it at 50%, let's have a look. Now, do we want it to do anything? Oh, maybe 100%, 100% might do it. There we are, 100%, aha! That's the value. Sometimes I even I get confused with my transforms. Okay, so it's kind of looking correct, except that we can see all the elements moving. Well, now this is a case of then saying overflow hidden in a few places. The first place that we'd probably want to do this is in the overlay itself, because we want it to reveal the text. So if we do overflow hidden, then we get this. <laughs> Oh, that's one. What we don't want to do is we don't necessarily want to add an overflow to the reveal because this would be the one you'd probably think of doing next because you're thinking, well, this gray block is the reveal overlay and so its parent is reveal, therefore I should put overflow hidden on the reveal. The problem with doing that is that then you'll stop the shadow uh, from appearing. So I'm going to sort of, oh, it's not cheap, but I'm going to add a reveal uh, container. I don't like it. But it's the only way to maintain the separation here. We want to have something that can be overflow hidden. Um, and so we need to create this other element. So I'm going to just do this container and say width 100%, height 100%. And then we're going to do overflow hidden. I'm going to say position absolute top zero, left zero. And hopefully, now you see we get this nice slidey reveal, which is the effect that we wanted. From there, you can do parameterization of, say, the colors. You could use uh, CSS variables. You could change the uh, typeface and mess around with the image. And you might end up with something that looks like this. Just saying. That's everything from me, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you have. That helps me a bunch. Subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget, you can ring that little notification bell if you want to be notified whenever I put one of these videos live on the interwebs. And I will catch you lovely folk. Where will I catch you? Oh yeah, on the flip side. That one felt good. All right.